Hello there, my name is Kevin Villanueva, and in this video, I will give you a glimpse of Montreal, Canada, whether you're looking forward to visiting or you just want to learn about it in general. Bonjour, mon nom c'est Kevin Villanueva, et dans ce vidéo-là, je vais vous donner un aperçu de Montréal, Canada. Si vous prévoyez de visiter ou si vous voulez simplement en savoir plus en général. Canada is one seriously huge place, measuring 4,600 kilometers from north to south. The country spans more than half the Northern Hemisphere. And at a whopping 5,500 kilometers from east to west, it stretches across six time zones. A vast, rugged land, Canada is the second largest country in the world, Russia being the largest, but only 0.5% of the world's population live there. Its southern and western border with the United States stretching 8,891 kilometers is the world's longest binational land border. Canada has a varied landscape with majestic mountains, rolling plains, forested valleys, and beautiful blue rivers and lakes. The Canada Shield, a hilly region of lakes and swamps, stretches across northern Canada and has some of the oldest rocks on Earth. In Canada's far north lies the frozen Arctic. Here, ice, snow, and glaciers dominate the landscape. Despite the cold, harsh climate, native Canadians, called First Nations people, live in this region where they hunt and fish for food. Canada's capital is Ottawa, and its three largest metropolitan areas are Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. It ranks among the highest in the international measurements of civil liberties, quality of life, and education. It is one of the world's most ethnically diverse and multicultural nations, the product of large-scale immigration from many other countries. Average winter and summer high temperatures across Canada vary from region to region. Winters can be very harsh in many parts of the country, particularly in the interior and prairie provinces, which experience a continental climate, where daily average temperatures are near negative 15 degrees, but can drop below negative 40 degrees with severe wind chills. In non-coastal regions, snow can cover the ground for almost six months of the year, while in parts of the north, snow can persist year-round. Coastal British Columbia has a temperate climate, with a mild and rainy winter. On the east and west coast, average high temperatures are generally in the low 20 degrees, while in between coasts, the average summer high temperatures ranges from 25 to 30 degrees, with temperatures in some interior locations occasionally exceeding 40 degrees. So let's talk about Canada's wildlife and nature. Canada's remote north and extensive forests are home to lots of wonderful wildlife from bears, wolves, deer, mountain lions, beavers, and bighorn sheep to smaller animals such as raccoons, otters, and rabbits. The country's lakes and rivers, which contain about 20% of all fresh water on Earth, are full of fish such as trout and salmon. Canada's prairies in the south are home to American buffalo and pronghorn antelope, and in the sprawling evergreen forests of northern Canada, moose and black bears are amongst the amazing animals that can be found. Even farther north, herds of reindeer and musk ox roam the cold, bear tundra. Canadians work hard to protect their native wildlife, and the country has 41 national parks and three marine conservation areas. Nevertheless, species like wolves, lynx, and Atlantic fish have faced threats from overhunting and overfishing. The first people to come to Canada arrived between 15,000 and 30,000 years ago across a land bridge that joined Asia and North America. Around 1000 AD, the Viking explorer Leif Erikson reached Newfoundland, Canada. He tried to establish a settlement, but it didn't last long. In 16th century, French and British settlers arrived. Land disputes between farmers and fur traders led to four wars between 1689 and 1763. The final war, called the French and Indian War, left the British in control of Canada, but French influence continued and remains strong even today. In some ways, Canada is many nations in one. Descendants of British and French immigrants make up about half the population. They were followed by other European and Asian immigrants. First Nations people make up about 4% of the population. Inuit people mostly live in Northwest Territories and Nunavut, 
Many native Canadians live on their traditional lands, but many others have moved to cities across Canada. First Nations artwork is widely recognized and is seen as a symbol of Canadian culture. In Quebec, cultural identity is strong, and there is a French-Canadian culture that is distinct from English-Canadian culture. However, as a whole, Canada is, in theory, a cultural mosaic, a collection of regional ethnic subcultures. Canada is religiously diverse, encompassing a wide range of beliefs and customs. Canada shares several major professional sports leagues with the United States. It is home to some of the most popular sports teams such as Toronto Raptors, Montreal Canadiens, and Toronto Blue Jays. Canada's national symbols are influenced by natural, historical, and indigenous sources. The use of the maple leaf as a Canadian symbol dates to early 18th century. The maple leaf is depicted on Canada's current and previous flags and on the arms of Canada. The arms of Canada are closely modeled after the Royal Coat of Arms of the United Kingdom with French and distinctive Canadian elements replacing or added to those derived from the British version. Let's talk about one of the most important parts of this video. Food. Foods typically considered national dishes of Canada include poutine, maple syrup, Montreal style bagels, salmon jerky, perigee, ketchup chips, they do exist here, <laughs> Nova Scotian donier, California roll, smoked salmon, and butter tarts. Art in Canada is marked by thousands of years of habitations by First Nations people followed by waves of immigrations which included artists of European origins and subsequently by artists with heritage from countries all around the world. Its nature reflects these diverse origins as artists have taken their tradition and adapted these influences to reflect the reality of their lives in Canada. Canadian art remains the combination of various influences. So, let's talk about Montreal. Located as it is on the St. Lawrence, Montreal has prospered as a cosmopolitan hub of communications and trade. Jacques Cartier landed here in 1535 and took the territory for his king. But it wasn't until 1642 that Paul de Chaminade founded a small mission station here called Ville-Marie de Montréal. This original settlement is today Montréal, the second largest French-speaking city in the world. Despite the city's size, the parts of Montreal that interest tourists are relatively compact neighborhoods. Major museums and the arts venues are in the downtown area, which we also call Centre-Ville, where you'll find Rue Sherbrooke, probably the city's most elegant thoroughfare. It is the spine of the city and the location of many museums and other institutions. Rue St. Catherine is Montreal's main shopping thoroughfare, a busy street lined with department stores, shops and restaurants. So now is the time to explore the city's landmarks. So let's start with Mont-Royal. Mont-Royal rises 233 meters above the city and is the green lung near the city center. A stroll through this lovely park enables the visitor to see monuments to Jacques Cartier and King George VI, to spend some time by La Castor, which we also call Beaver Lake, from the summit or rather from a platform below the cross there unfolds a magnificent panorama of the whole of the 51 km length of the Ile de Montréal and the St. Lawrence. On clear days, the view extends to the Adirondack Mountains in the United States of America. Vieux Montréal, which we also call Old Montreal. Vieux Montréal is a remarkable concentration of buildings dating from the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. The district has delightful feel of Parisian style quarter, situated as it is between the waterfronts and the business hub. Its many historic sites, streets and landmarks are best explored on foot. Of the many things to do here, the highlights are visiting the Pointe Calière Museum of Archaeology and History, the Twin Tower Notre Dame Basilica, the quays of the revitalized Old Port and the open air gathering space of Place de Jacques Cartier. Jardin Botanique, which we'll also call Botanical Garden. High above the city, in the grounds that hosted the 1976 Summer Olympics Games, Parc Maisonneuve is the site of the Montreal's wonderfully imaginative Botanical Garden. The diverse plants are grown into 30 themed gardens and 10 exhibition greenhouses. 
so a wide range of climates are represented. Outdoor gardens include the beautiful Japanese and Chinese gardens, as well as those devoted to alpine, aquatic, medicinal, shade, useful, and even toxic plants. There is also an interesting insectarium and huge arboretum on the grounds, as well as ponds supporting a variety of birds. Notre Dame Basilica Founded in 1656, Montreal's oldest church, Notre Dame Basilica stands in a far grander incarnation than the original. The admission charge to the Basilica includes a 20-minute tour, or you can take a one-hour tour that gives more historical information and access to private areas, including the second balcony and the crypt. Oratoire Saint-Joseph Saint Joseph's Oratory The Oratoire Saint-Joseph is a mecca for pilgrims and its huge Renaissance-style domed basilica dating to 1924. A cloister behind the church leads up to Mont Royal. There is a northwest view from the observatory over Montreal and Lac Saint-Louis. Parc Jean Drapeau. It is Sainte Hélène and the artificial island of Notre Dame were the sites of Expo 67. They are now known as Parc Jean Drapeau and have many family minded attractions. A remnant of the 1967 World Fair, the Biosphere is now a museum dedicated to ecological issues. The building is designed in the shape of a sphere and is the largest such structure in the world. Other tourist attractions in the islands include the La Ronde Amusement Park, the Stewart Museum, Basin Olympique, where the Olympic rowing events were held, and Racecourse Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Musée de Beaux-Arts The Musée de Beaux-Arts is the oldest museum in Canada and houses vast collections of painting, sculpture, and new media. Its outstanding collections of world culture and Mediterranean archaeology total nearly 10,000 objects and there are excellent collections of African, Asian, and Islamic art, as well as art from the North and South America. Pointe à Calière At one corner of Place Royale in Vieux Montréal is the Pointe à Calière, now marked by a striking modern building, housing a museum of archaeology and history. Place Royale was the center of life in Montreal's early and colonial days. But underneath today's Montreal, Remnants of these early streets and foundations still remain, and you can explore these on a visit to the museum. The route through the city's history begins underground, where you can walk among the original stone paved streets, drainage channels, and ground floors of the 17th century buildings. Place des Arts Place des Arts is an entire complex dedicated to visual and performing arts, the largest of its kind in all Canada. Its various stages and rehearsal halls provide venues for all kinds of theater, music, dance, films, and events. The most important of these is the annual summer Festival International de Jazz de Montréal, held in late June and early July, attracting visitors from all over the world and bringing in some of the biggest names in jazz. Outwater and Jean Markets the Outwater Market and Jean Talon Market are Montreal's busiest public markets and well worth visiting for their atmosphere and local food specialties and products. Located in warehouse-style buildings, the markets feature vendors selling fruits and vegetables, flowers, meats, fish, cheese, baked goods, and specialty foods. You'll find maple syrup and candies, dried wild blueberries, home-style fruit jams and preserves, and the region's fine cheese, as well as restaurants and cafes selling luscious pastries. The markets are favorite stop for locals on Saturday mornings for a bowl of coffee and flaky croissants. St. Mary Queen of the World The Catholic Mary Queen of the World Cathedral, east of Place du Canada, was built in 1894 as a small version of St. Peter's in Rome. McCord Museum the McCord Museum has an outstanding collection of exhibits on Canada's social history, especially native people, artifacts and arts of the First Nations people including clothing and accessories, hunting and fishing equipment, weapons of war, domestic implements, ceremonial items and arts, as well as archaeological finds from early Aboriginal cultures. Square Saint-Louis and Rue Denis Near the Sherbrooke Metro Station, Square Saint-Louis rates as one of Montreal's previous old squares and is set in a turn of a century French-Canadian residential quarter. In the little streets around the tree-shaded square, there are still a few attractive Victorian houses. Historic buildings have been converted into boutiques, bistros, and cafes. Lachine Canal National Historic Site 
Lachine Canal was last used for shipping and nowadays it forms part of a park and offers plenty of opportunities for charming trips along the canal banks. A bike path borders its entire length through an open green space and you can also cruise the canal by boat. Chinatown Montreal's Chinatown is centered on the Rue de la Gauche Sierre, with Chinese gates making the heart of the quarter. Chinatown is filled with Asian restaurants and shops, no longer exclusively Chinese, but a place where locals and tourists go to enjoy a good meal. Hopefully you found this video informative. Thanks for watching. Peace.